What is queer theory? First of all, the term queer is synonym for homosexual, or gay. The term queer has traditionally been used in a highly pejorative sense, and has been seen as a classic expression of homophobia. But according to Green's authoritative dictionary of slang, the term queer did not acquire negative connotations until circa 1925. It was reappropriated as a positive self-designation by gay, or queer militants in the early 1990s. In the United States, the Militant Queer Nation organization was founded in 1990. And the gay newspaper, The Advocate, proclaimed 1992 as the year of the queer. The change of terminology reflects both a growing unease with the gay identity politics of the previous decades, and the impact of the new and angry militancy provoked by the media panic over the spread of AIDS, and media attempts to blame gays for it. Hence, queer theory questions the early gay liberationist notion of a stable, or core gay identity, pointing out that homosexuality, is a category of knowledge, rather than a tangible reality. Queer theory also attempts to broaden the definition of gay and lesbian politics to include a bisexuality that is often viewed with suspicion by gays and feminists alike. It is important to note that queer theory is largely a product of the 1990s, and has been influential in literary studies, post-colonial theory, and some areas of sociology. A number of influences can be detected, but the starting point for most queer theory is Michel Foucault's theses about regimes of sexuality, and the epistemological shift brought about by the emergence of the category of the homosexual, when a taxonomy of acts, such as the remarkably vague notion of sodomy, was replaced by a typology of sexual identities. One of the key texts in the development of queer theory describes those theses as axiomatic. Jack Derrida's deconstruction is frequently evoked in order to demonstrate the instability of binary oppositions, such as male, female, and hetero, homosexuality, as are Judith Butler's theses on gender as performative. In this context, masculinity can be demonstrated to be an unstable cluster of fears about effeminacy, and repressed homosexual, or homosocial desires, rather than the simple opposite of femininity. There is, for some, a considerable overlap between queer theory, new historicism, cultural materialism, and the theory of subcultures, and it is argued that it is part of a more general defense of minority cultures. In literary terms, the most important fields for queer theory are the Renaissance and early modern periods. In her important afterword to the anthology, Queering the Renaissance, Margaret Hunt explains that Renaissance societies are sufficiently different from modern societies to destabilize received notions of gender, sexuality, and identity, because they did not, for example, have any psychological, or medical model of homosexuality. At the same time, the Renaissance often provides models that are used to validate mainstream concepts of individuality. The literature of those societies, thus, makes it possible to chart the rise of modern Western social-political systems, and the way they define gender in normative terms. In the same anthology, Alan Bray examines the uncertain boundary between male friendship and homosexuality, by looking at the ambiguous relationship, between Edward and Gaveston in Marlowe's Edward XI. What could be a solemnitical relationship is seemingly inscribed within the socially acceptable category of passionate male friendship, but the tension between the two categories is never resolved. Queer theory ultimately raises the question of whether the notion of fixed sexual identities is desirable, or even tenable. As we can see, it is really hard to pin down the exact meaning of queer theory. But some of the key concepts that help us identify whether one is leaning toward this theory is the idea that all sexual behaviors, and all concepts that link sexual behaviors to sexual identities, as well as all categories of normative and deviant sexualities, are social constructs. That is, products of social and historical construction. Hence, they are simply sets of signifiers, which create certain types of social meaning. Also, queer theory follows feminist theory and gay, lesbian studies in rejecting the idea that sexuality, is an essentialist category, 
something determined by biology, or judged by eternal standards of morality and truth. Hence, for queer theorists, sexuality is a complex array of social codes and forces, forms of individual activity, and institutional power, which interact to shape the ideas of what is normative and what is deviant at any particular moment, and which then operate under the rubric of what is natural, essential, biological, or God-given.